No. Well, I don't know, like, word for word, but we were paying. And then I was like, do you accept Apple Pay? And then he said something about, like, Apple Pay, urban natives, you know, something along the lines of that realm. Did I make fun of you being a per cap Indian? You didn't know I had per cap then. Oh, no, I did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it recording? Yeah, that's just recording. So, who am I here with? So, so who am I here with? How are you feeling? I'm feeling really good. Feeling really good? And a little nervous. A little nervous? A little nervous. Just act like there's no cameras in front of you. Oh. Yeah, just act like that. That'll be easy. That'll be easy, you know? That'll be really easy. You're going to be, you're possibly going to be the next UCLA princess coming up. So I'm hoping so. You're hoping so. Exactly. I'm praying. Praying so. Exactly. Anyways, welcome guys. We are here for our first ever episode of Catching Up With Cousins podcast. Love to give a really quick shout out to Finn Disharoon and Matthew Herman for helping us out with the camera Yay. equipment and camera angles. So we appreciate those guys. Again, my this is your host, Talanota or Native Hustle. And our first guest of this podcast, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Lily Baga. I'm Tachioka and Si Chungu Lakota. Ooh. Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. So if you guys may not know, I've been doing uh in inter- tiktok interviews for the longest time and we actually did an interview which pal was it it was san manuel san manuel man so much has changed since then how did you like san manuel by the way um it was pretty good Uh, i danced a little bit but i was mostly there for the vibes the lemonade the food the food yeah just for the vibes yeah honestly that's how san manuel is but since we're obviously not at san manuel we are at wild horse the 26th annual wild horse pal at el camino college how are you liking it? I know you didn't dress out today. I didn't, so. but I, I'm enjoying it. I really like the smaller, more tight-knit community mm-hmm. powwows because it feels like it's just more communal-based, and yeah. I really appreciate that. Yeah. What would you have to say is, like, the difference when you go to big, like, for example, San Manuel, it's a casino powwow, mm-hmm. casino tri powwow. it's a lot bigger, and then you go to the powwows like this, which is more community-based. What would you say is, like, the major difference you see? The major difference is that you can kind of sense, like, the competitiveness when you go to a more large casino-based powwow, which I don't mind at all. I really enjoy those powwows too, but once in a while, you definitely need a break from those. You need to like just hone in on the reason why powwows exist, and that's just to dance and to be with your community and your people. Of course, because that's obviously what powwows are meant for. Mm-hmm. We're not Canada. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, just quick laughter. Anyways, but... This is our first time being at a community college. How do you like the space? Because I'm not sure if you've have you ever been to the Wild Horse Power before? before I have this? when I was like maybe like 10. 10. Yeah. My family, we used to come up here, uh, dance for one day, and then go hit up LA the, the Sunday of the that, that, that's pretty. That's pretty. Yeah. You come here for one day and then you go to LA. Yeah. Afterwards. Exactly. That, that's pretty, that's, that seems pretty, uh, pretty dope. But well, how are you liking this space? Because for people who do not know, this is an elk, this is a community college. Mm-hmm. It's a gymnasium with three basketball courts in it. Mm-hmm. So it's a huge ass gymnasium. What do, you, what do you think about that? I I actually really enjoy dancing in gymnasiums. Really? Like I feel like it's like my joints don't hurt as much after. <laughs> like if we were like outside on like a. I don't know. Sometimes my like calves and shins really yeah. hurt when I'm like on grass. Because one, because one I could really think of it's one is gymnasium floors, mm-hmm. and then there's concrete, mm-hmm. and and then there's grass. Yeah. So, well, actually, just another question: What would you say is the best like surface to really dance on? From your point, from your point of view, or your opinion? Um, there are some powwows who have their um floors like with carpet installed on it like there's carpet panels if they're installed correctly and if they don't separate while you're dancing it's probably my favorite floor to dance on mm-hmm. for sure damn so i would have said like because one i've definitely been on a power where there's grass mm-hmm. and then there's one really weird one i'm not gonna say the name but they had their power in a parking lot like just in oh, a parking wow. lot and i'm just like and i I talked to the dancers at that pal and they're like yeah this is the most uncomfortable i've ever been like a, in a while and Mox i'm like all tore up yeah mocks her. are all torn up like you gotta duct tape everything and it's not even to work but yeah but then also like turf 
if I believe I went to San Diego State Powell and that's they had turf mm-hmm. on like that had power on turf and so many dancers were kind of complaining, being like, yo, this is not it. <laughs> like this is like what would like imagine just like having being on turf and just dancing. You feel like that's very slippery, you know? That is definitely burning your your mocks. It's burning yeah. up like a lot, especially yeah. that material. But since we're here at a gymnasium, um, how are you liking it? I know I probably asked that before. You definitely did. I definitely did. Yeah, God, you did. <laughs> okay, it's not good. It's not good. We're going okay. to great so, direction. Okay. But if you guys, for another topic, I wanted to bring up. Main reason I wanted to bring you on here actually is because you were the one. You were the person that influenced me to make my short film. Mm-hmm. You are the person that that story comes from. <laughs> You're the reason it has over 500 views on YouTube, but that's what's up. That's what's up. Um, if you want to, I'll let I'll let this be your time to maybe add on to that story. Okay. Maybe like maybe details that are possibly left out. Okay. So, I'm currently an undergraduate student at UCLA, and we have a Native organization there. But even then, we or the Native population is still not well. In terms of representation, we make up less than 1% of the entire student body. And so Tyler is one of my one of my good friends. And so that's something that I would kind of bring up to him a lot is that I just feel like there's not really much I can relate to um, in terms of my experiences as a Native student. Even sometimes even within like my own Native organization or the the asa american indian student association there are times where we all come from different native backgrounds so that's obviously something that i can't really control and i appreciate having different native people from different native backgrounds because it allows me to see the native community as an even larger picture than what i originally thought it was but there's still like this sense of wanting to relate to some to a larger group of people, which I do not have. And so it constantly leaves me missing home, being back on my reservation and just being around my culture. And so since I I do come from um, a reservation, I, it was really hard for me to adjust to living into, or living in a more urbanized setting. And so that's where a lot of my struggles would come from in terms of being in school. And so that's something that I would express a lot to Tyler. Like, a lot. You've heard about it a lot. Way too much. (laughs) I swear I wear hair about, like, almost every single night. Yeah. But honestly, after I made that, I remember, like, when I even talked with you about it, I was like, hey, I have this project I need to do. And I actually have a feeling this could be a relatable topic to many individuals around the indigenous community. And I remember talking to her with that. And... I remember she said, I remember you, Lily, your words were, I would be so happy that if you, that you would make this short film. Yeah. After seeing it, after watching it, mm-hmm. giving it your thoughts, what do you think about it? The short film? I think that it did a really good job encapsulating how that feeling really is because it can be a very, very isolating feeling. Even if there's a, a, even one individual who can relate to you to the slightest amount, even then sometimes it feels like that's not really enough. And so you're constantly trying to just find something that can be as relatable as possible in terms of your identity. And so I think that that film really, really, it really did capture onto that. And I really did enjoy that aspect of it. You hear that, Finn? We did a good job. Amazing. Shout out to my guy. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. But how do you feel? Because one, this was probably my first, my first actual, like, a lot of effort was put into this short film. Mm-hmm. So even though it was just a regular, just film class, mm-hmm. a lot of work was put into this. And the fact that I got a lot of feedback, especially from my teachers and my TA who were, have both worked on Hollywood sets. They said that this story can be turned into a feature film. How do you feel about hearing that, but then also hearing that these stories work? Like these types of stories work in the industry. And honestly, it makes me feel really empowered to be an indigenous person. Like, obviously, like it's. (laughs) God, (laughs) it sucks that indigenous people have to go through these different like instances of not feeling like they fit in but at the same time if you have the opportunity and the platforms and the audience who are wanting to grasp onto that story as well 
that can be so empowering for so many people who feel that way. And I just think that that's such an amazing thing. We did good. We actually did good with that film. But then also moving on to another topic. Um, I'm pretty sure. Have you seen the new film Killers of the Flower Moon? I have. I have. What did you think about that? Um, because one, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't even watched it. Oh, really? I have, I have not. Okay. I've heard so many criticism about the film, like especially indigenous um, individuals who work in the film industry, who are directors and producers. Mm -hmm. They they even like made videos on how you don't really have to watch it because another, it's just another film where we all don't even make it to the end of the movie yes so what do you feel how do you feel watching that film and coming out of that film how did that really make you feel after watching that movie um i kind of had the impression that this movie was more so made for non-indigenous people the movie had a lot of very graphic and violent scenes throughout it um yeah it was a very tough watch there are multiple scenes where uh, indigenous women are being murdered it shows representations of their murdered bodies and it just shows how nobody really cared too much to go and search more into these different cases other than the osage tribe themselves and so i believe this is this is definitely more so for the non-indigenous audience to kind of have a, a rude awakening to how indigenous people have been treated in general throughout history but I, I would totally emphasize that it is a really, really hard watch, especially as an Indigenous woman, to see all of these crimes being just brushed past, you know? Yeah. Because anything, that's what how a lot of these films have been throughout the entire, throughout a couple of years. Mm. For me, speaking from experience, I, I was on the Revenant set. And when I got invited to watch the film before it was released... Just seeing the amount of graphic violence that was in that film, seeing that not all of our indigenous characters in that film made it to the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. It was just basically based off of some white guy who was in love with an indigenous woman, had a family, family got killed, and he survived a bear attack. Like, that's really all it's about. Yep. And it's really, like, nothing much about the indigenous side. Because now, like, even though I was small when I was casted onto that set, seeing that now looking at it now like comparing it to other films like the one we recently released kills of the flower moon i'm like this is basically what we're being treated like mm -hmm. and i know since you're going to be going for miss ucla powwow you are in your campaign i might as well ask you that topic like how do you think the indigenous or native community should be portrayed on screen i believe that indigenous people should be portrayed in ways that emphasize and, and uplift their voices, their thoughts, their successes, rather than just being retold the same histories of how we were violently mistreated. I think that being able to share how Indigenous people have succeeded and continue to succeed will bring a larger emphasis to how we are still so present in our society and we're constantly wanting to make changes, but people continue to see us as these very helpless people because of the movies that are being released in the present day when that in reality we have so many so many support systems within our own communities that we have the resources to succeed we have succeeded before it's just a matter of who wants to represent us in that manner and obviously we're there's still many many actors out there that we're waiting we're looking for to represent us in that matter and many stories to be told yeah for us to be represented in that matter so i did kind of transition into the miss ucla campaign <laughs> tell us what that's like what's the process of being of trying to become a university's power princess what's that like okay so the application process is actually much longer than i thought it would be you have to <laughs> prove that you're um a tribal affiliate you have to prove your age you have to show that you're an enrolled student you have to write a personal essay you have to demonstrate a traditional skill you have to write an essay for that traditional skill you have to have two letters of recommendation and yeah. you have to submit a photo of yourself and you have to sign the agreements the most important one submit a photo of yourself <laughs> we need a photo of you to make I, sure you're I real it took like 
lots and lots of photos. I saw you posting about that. Yeah, yeah. You were like, you were like straight up like being like, I am the next Juana chasing horse. Please. I am posing like this. I am her. I I was told to pose like that. I would not I would not have known how to pose if I didn't have someone like mm-hmm. directing me. Who was directing you? Uh she's my sister. Her name is Hades Babrisa Banali. She's an adopted sister, but shout out to her. Shout out yes. to her. But overall, how is this process kind of making you feel? Um <laughs> <laughs> like I mean it could be truthful. It's, it's up to you. I I think about it a lot. I get really nervous really easily whenever I think about it. Like last night, I was legit thinking, okay, I I couldn't sleep last night. So my mind was just going through everything. And I was like, okay, we need to finish up like our application. And then I was thinking, oh, we also, oh, another part of it, we have to do an interview. And so I was thinking, oh my God, like, hold on, wait, what kind of interview? Like a professional interview. With who? I have no idea. I have no idea. The dean of UCLA comes down and is like, Imagine. why do you deserve to become a UCLA Powell princess? Exactly. <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay. I think there's a couple other things that I did miss out. But like on the actual like pageant part of it, there's uh, a personal interview. There's a traditional skill uh, presentation. There's um, a question that you have to answer in front of everyone at the powwow. And the application also says that there's like a powwow dance competition, but I'm not sure they did huh. that last year. That would be interesting. Yeah. I'm like trying to think of like how that would go. Cause yeah. I've, me personally, going to different, like I've been to many universities, powwows like Riverside, Stanford, and it's just like I've never seen them do one. And, but again, I, that's just from experience. Yeah. But. I have no idea. You have no idea. I have no idea. But it's an application. <laughs> it's on the so application. I'm like preparing myself for that. But I was just thinking like I don't know like what I'm gonna wear to this personal interview mm-hmm. because it's the same day as a uh, traditional skill presentation from what I can tell. And for the traditional skill presentation, you have to also wear like traditional regalia. And so at like, that point I would expect them just to make sure you go from the in the presentation, straight to the interview in the regalia. Yeah. That's what I would assume. That would make my life really easy. <laughs> you wouldn't have to, like, get into suit and everything or something like ah. that. Yeah. But, um, oh, I'm trying to think of where I was going to segue from this. But since you're going to be going into it, mm-hmm. how has this, how have you been preparing outside? How have you been preparing at home? So mm-hmm. I know you've been posting about it a lot, you making your baskets. You've been, like, really yes. preparing and everything. Yes. So. How's that going? So it's going pretty good. I'm, I'm a lot of it is just a matter of self-confidence. Um, so I've been, I've been practicing basket weaving, which is something that has been very important to my tachioka culture. I'm learning how to do greetings in both my Sichonga Lakota language and then the tachioka language. And I'm just trying to learn as much language as I possibly can. I randomly call my sister, my mom, just asking them to ask me random pageant questions just so I can get them nailed down. It's been it's been a lot. I think about it a lot. <laughs> like more than I'd like to, honestly, but Yeah. How would you how has your family been been handling all this? Since I know your sister's a huge huge influence on yeah. you she's been a huge help especially your mom and your father yes so how have they helped in the way they're really excited for me um a lot of a lot of the preparation that i've done has been very like cultural oriented so that has been very exciting for my parents because they love to see their children being more involved in their culture and so yeah they're really excited they help out whenever they can uh one of my recent favorites is that since I'm basket weaving, traditionally my people used to basket weave with like a deer bone mm-hmm. awl. So it's like a really sharp like tool that you would use yeah, to like yeah, poke yeah. holes through like the basket. And so my dad made me one and that was really cool. And that was really heartwarming that he would do that for me. Mm-hmm. Well, your dad's just that guy. He I is. Will say, Shout your dad, out Truman Baga. Your dad is that guy, especially hearing how long he's been in the community. Yeah. Like hearing how, like, so I've heard so many stories from so many people. What? Just like, no, good stories. Good okay. stories. No, 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 not that, not, not, not going like, yeah, his dad, her dad was at the 49, uh, midnight. <laughs> that was the snagging days. What do no. you know about Truman Baga? Question. Yeah, that is a question. What do you know about Truman Baga? His lore. 
his what lore? about his lore what do you what do you think what do you think should be known about his lore oh man that's a very vague question very vague there. yeah <laughs> I don't know. Even I'm learning more, more and more things about him. Like every day, mm-hmm. it's it's just, it's just like he. You feel like he's no but he's not. He's just like yeah. he's really like. All of a sudden, he'll say something. You're like, wait, you do that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. But other than that, how has trying to maintain the princess pageant campaign mm-hmm. and also trying to keep up with school at the same time how is that because i know you said you have about how many essays you have to do after this um i have two midterm papers oh. one is five to seven pages and then another one is five to six pages so that's very exciting so how have you been able to what's like your routine when it comes to having to balance out you know uh Miss, Miss UCLA pageant and then also having to balance out school at the same time because I know we'll both equally take up a lot of time yes so I have to try to remind myself that the Miss UCLA pageant stuff has a more extended deadline than the stuff that I'm currently working on for my classes so I try and do it based on like deadlines pretty much yeah so since I have midterms coming up i'm going to work less and less on the ucla stuff and focus more so on my midterms so that i can obviously get a good grade on everything yeah. but if i ever need breaks i'll 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 hone in on my ucl miss ucla stuff yeah. to kind of just balance things out and not completely abandon one thing for the other what would you say like really helps you relax in those points because i know it's so much mm-hmm. i know you love vinyls Oh, yes. You love vinyls. I love vinyls. So what would you say is a really good way to relax in between all of that? Um, I'm a very I'm a very big fan of music. So I have like like you said, vinyls. I think I have almost around three hundred vinyl records. Yeah. yeah, I have this app. You can start like... your own store, you know that, right? You could literally be like, uh Lily Baga's uh Baga. A... It's pronouncing it wrong this entire time. Baga. Baga. Like bag. Bag. Uh. Uh. Oh, I'm, bag. A, I'm a shitty person, uh. guys. I am such a shitty person. Maybe he isn't that good of a friend. Oh! I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> but what would you say are your way to relax when you in between both? Um, listening to music. I also really like either baking or just having like a little snack. Remember that one time during an interview when I said that I DoorDash food and you... Oh, that's a, a, a moment we'll never see the bride of day. He pretty much called me... No, th- I did not. I did not. I didn't... Okay. Uh, I, I actually... It was, a, like, it was a perfect funny moment. Flash in my head right as I began to like mention any sort of food. I was like, wait, should I... <laughs> I will never see the light oh, of day. Oh, man. I will never see the light of day. I was too shocked to say a word. I was. It was It was humbling. Oh, it was all humbling. Beca- all because I have a dash pass. Sorry. <laughs> all because I get student discounts. Exactly. <laughs> but other than your vinyls, other than you baking, mm-hmm. you said, I remember you said you, you're basically on your own out here. Oh, yeah. You're really on your own. I am. And didn't you say, like, you used to have, didn't you, you never had roommates? Like, you never, like, think, thought about that, or? I only had roommates when I dormed for my first year at UCLA, only because it's required that you dorm, Mm -hmm. and that experience was just not for me. It was not for me. Not for you? No. It was. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it all comes to personal, like, it all comes to personal preference, but, again, it just wasn't for you. Mm-hmm. How was that transition going from dorm to your own place? Because I know, like, you have your an entire place to yourself. Yeah, you, like you've you've made. I've seen you post about, make videos about it. Like you're just like, yeah, I'm living my own life in LA. Yeah, like, how what is that like? Um, it's a lot of fun. It makes me feel very proud of how far I've come in life. Like, obviously, I'm only 19, but to say that I live on my own, I I make my own food, I do all of my own chores. I live by myself, do everything for myself. It's really humbling to really be able to say all of that stuff. How many times do you have to call your parents and be like, yo, how do I do this again? I call my parents way too much. Way too much? And there are times when I just call my mom for the sake of calling her. Just just for calling her? Yeah. 
I mean, if anything, that's what parents are for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. What would you, do you have any advice for maybe incoming indigenous or native students that are coming, maybe either, either the UCLA or any prestigious four year institution? What would you say, like, what's your, what would your step by step guide to trying to have a really good um, four year there? Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that made sense. I, I'm just yapping at this point. I think, I think <laughs> it did make sense. It kind of did. Okay. So <laughs> the first step is, I'm I'm a very shy person, mm-hmm. but try not to be too shy because you want to build as many relationships as you possibly can because part of what Tyler's film is about is um being in feeling isolated. It, feeling isolated, yeah. exactly. No so one can just, relate to you, no one can relate to that the what you're going through in life. Yeah. And so just finding those relationships and being around people and just communicating with them as much as possible would be very helpful to avoid that feeling um hmm what else what else what else um i don't know don't get into a frat don't get into a frat nah. because those are those are those are, uh, those, are, those, are for, those are those are for custard's great great grandchildren yeah yep. for the wasiches you know hey! <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I think I had like I even had added this this question into my interview TikTok interview book, mm-hmm. and it was like because I remember my dad pitched it to me. I may not have written it down right, but you can try and answer it if you want to. Okay, it's like what are some urban native hacks? Urban native hacks, <sighs> like stuff that we can do as an urban native that if a native were to come out to the urban area, they can do. You know, it's a, okay. it's a hack. You know, <laughs> that's all. I like. I may have written it down some way that I did not understand when I when I when I talked about it, but mm-hmm. you know you can try and answer it however way you. Okay, may. honestly, I've never done this before, but it's something that I think about a lot whenever I go to like the grocery store, like Whole Foods or something. Mm-hmm. Like if you have no place to go pick pick your sage, just get just the fresh sage from there and bundle from it Whole up. Foods? Yeah, Whole Foods has sage. <laughs> yeah, for like seasoning your food, they have like the whole leaves of sage. I like yeah that Trader Joe's has it, Ralph's has it. Yeah. Why am I actually shocked at this? So if you need your sage, go, I did go not, to the grocery store. You're telling me I did not have to travel 500 miles to go. Well, I, I do know places now where you can get sage. Uh, like Griffith yeah. Park is the place to go. Mm-hmm. Is it go? Yeah, it's a go. It's a go. If you need sage, go to Griffith Park. There you go. For Griffith sure. Park. All you're going to see is a bunch of ceremonies going on. There. <laughs> How do we bless this park? This is our now. No, for real. I was legit at a trail like a few days ago and I had my tobacco in my pocket because I was going to see if they had stuff for my basket weaving stuff, but they didn't have any. And right as I was leaving the like the the park, I looked over and I saw this big old bush of sage and I was like, you know what? This isn't like a complete <laughs> L. This is not a waste of my time. It's exactly. so a huge bush right here. Thank I you, definitely... creator. Thank you, creator. <laughs> we thank you for this time here. <laughs> How was that? How was that, Lily? That was pretty good. That was pretty good. I'm so proud of myself. Matthew, high five. I'm gonna give my cameraman a high five. Give my yes, high five. High five. Um, <laughs> but how does it feel coming home from from UCLA? How does that feel? Oh man, I love I love coming or I love going home. Um, I live around three hours away, so it's not like a completely like. Uh-huh strenuous travel yeah depending on traffic in la mm-hmm. i should oh, say that god oh. yeah sometimes you wanna, it do you want like... do you even want to describe traffic in la um oh, actually specifically ucla traffic i forget which freeway that, that's right 405. 405 you want to describe 405 traffic oh man okay so i had to take it's... the 405 for probably like three miles and it took me 20 minutes to go three miles on the 405 just to get here actually I live around like 19, 20 miles away. Took me an hour and a half to get here yesterday. Maybe it's because it was a Friday. I don't know. But oh I I pulled up to my hotel. My parents pulled up and I just was not having it. I was not in a good mood. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize, a, mom and dad. For many people who are not from LA or not in the area. Yes. It's just, it's terrible. It's, it's, it really does challenge your mental capacity. You're just yeah. like, you're like, please drive faster. I need you to, mm-hmm. just please. But, uh, 
Oh, I'm trying to think of where I was gonna go from after that. Um, let's see. Let me think. 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 Um, we're at about almost a half an hour. Oh wow! Almost a half an hour episode. It's okay because you know it's the first episode, first times for everything. But I know you. I'm trying to think of like how the hell did we meet? I think you friended me on Facebook. If I'm not gonna lie, and then I just accepted it. Okay, I actually remember this. Oh God, you remember it. Oh, no. okay. So this isn't how we met, but I think the first time that I ever saw you, me and my sister went to. Oh, you the told me about CSU this. Long Beach. You told me, uh... We weren't dancing. We were just there for some Indian tacos to buy some earrings. You know, do the do the basics. We stopped by Wild Horse Cafe, and this guy over here is serving us. And I don't even remember what he said, but it was probably the corniest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. I don't even and remember what so I said. we order our food, we pay, we wait for everything to get picked up. Our food is delivered to us. I don't know if he said anything corny after that either or not, but we left, we sat down, and my sister was like, that was not funny. <laughs> She was unimpressed with this dude, and I just yeah. kind of like it left my mind as soon as it was able to. Yeah. And then I I saw him on my for you page probably, and I was like, you know what? I'll follow this dude. And then I found his Facebook, and I, I friend requested him. And then um, flash forward to UC Riverside. Okay, well, that I, was the power. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I went was. to order some food, and then did you did you accept my friend request before or after I ordered? It was before. Before. Yeah. Yeah, and then you were like, did "You think we're friends on Facebook?" And I was like, "I was like, oh, I was yeah. like, you look very familiar." <laughs> did you try friending me on Facebook? And I was, it like, was just literally just like that. Yeah. And that's how. No, I was like, <laughs> That's how a lot of that's how a lot of relationships are built at this point. You know, just you just go to a flea market and you're like, Oh, did you send me that friend request on Facebook a couple days ago? Like, huh? It popped up on my messenger. I was all confused. Yeah. But uh <laughs> but yeah, from there we kind of just like kept talking. Mm -hmm. Like, I know that I don't know, like I vaguely remember that moment where I said something cheesy. But at the same time, every time I'm in the food booth, I'm saying something cheesy no matter what. Yeah. No matter whether I whether people think it's funny or not. At this point, you know, I think I that's do, just who you are. It's just who I am. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, hey, it's doing it for the tips. Yeah. For the tips. All right. Let me get I think actually, I think I know what you said. Oh, we, no. Well, I don't know, like word for word, but we were paying. And then I was like, do you accept Apple Pay? And then you said something about like Apple Pay, urban natives, you know, something along the lines of that realm. Did I make fun of you being a per cap Indian? You didn't know I had per cap then. Oh, no, I did. Oh. <laughs> I do not get per cap. Oh, that's that's my, if you guys don't know, that's my running joke right now. It's just like per cap Indian when people are like, oh, why can't you afford this? I'm like, Shh, I'm not per cap. I'm not. I'm really not. My tribe's like 500 miles away from me. <laughs> so I can already, no, I, no I, can, I can already think of it. I can already hear it. I can hear it. So I can hear it. I can already imagine like you're paying for your food and you're mm -hmm. like, oh, do you accept Apple Pay? I'm like, oh, you know, no, we only accept EBT and food stamps. You don't <laughs> believe in the urban Indian bougie shit. I can already, I, I can it already, might have been something it might have like been something it like that. Been. I can hear, I can already hear it. Really? Your sister didn't like that? No. Damn it. <laughs> I'm about to talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> You should apologize. I should her. apologize. Yeah. Did I offend her? No. That's why I'm, oh shit! I offended a perk. Oh, oh. oh too good. Too, too good. good. Too good. Too good. But if anything, since we were t that's how we met. We met at the fry bed booth. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to transition into taco economics. Taco economics. So we met. We talked about it a little bit in our TikTok interview. The last time I remember a taco being at a low price, it was about eight dollars. Yeah. What prices have you seen going to different powwows throughout California? Because if I'm if I'm correct, you've been to powwows throughout California. If I from what I've seen, yeah. What have the prices looked like throughout all the powwows you've been to? Um, I've seen eight dollars. Mm -hmm. I've seen ten, twelve, fifteen. I think anything pushing twelve is push is yeah. like pushing it twelve. Like if you're not gonna give me no freaking 
Pepsi with that? Yeah. No. Yeah. No, you're crazy. Yeah. And then you are insane. <laughs> and <laughs> my guys are my, my my camera guys are trying to keep warm right now, so they're just jamming to the music. They're doing a little roundy right. They're now. doing doing a little roundy, doing a little quick two step. <laughs> just like, <laughs> and then get away. They did it, but um. <laughs> I've seen as high, I think when I went to, I think Arizona in Mesa, Arizona, um, we went to a powwow there just because we were in the area. Mm -hmm. And I saw, so the starting taco, just a regular Indian taco, taco or bread, beans, meat, lettuce, cheese, and tomato, I think it was about $15. Oh, Lord. Here's what they get you. If you want red chili on it or salsa, 16 If you want jalapenos or like these types of chilies, um. 17 and then i think they added one more topping it almost got um, to have everything all the fixings on your taco 20 dollars. and i was like that's that's uh devastating 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 um what like especially if y'all don't get no per cap <laughs> we're gonna continue to make fun of per cap being is on this podcast i'm just kidding i'm just kidding but so funny <laughs> but also what Marlise Howard, she was former Saquon Power Princess. Mm -hmm. She made a good point how meat is getting expensive. It is. It's getting very expensive. And then especially people... Uh, uh, there's some booths where I get a little bit lenient. At Stanford University's Power, they had a booth who was selling buffalo meat. And that was like... <laughs> We're talking so much about food, my cameramen are like, yo, that sounds good right now. Yeah. Like buffalo meat, yeah. But they were selling some buffalo meat Indian tacos, and that was like almost twenty five dollars. And I was like, "Yo, honestly, I'm not even gonna lie. I can't argue against that. I would buy. I you would, would buy, buy it. Twenty five dollars <laughs> buffalo meat yeah. Indian taco. Yeah, yeah. My so. inner plains native. <laughs> I don't have to hunt for it myself this time. It's just right here in front of me. Yeah. Don't even have to cook it or strip it down, you know, or skin yeah. it. It's just right there. The only sad part is there's no hide with it. That's what I do." <laughs> But if anything, how have you, what would you think if you want to like kind of go on more about it? I'm like, how much any taco should really cost? Because mm -hmm. again, what you're thinking of is because I'm not trying to include our booth, my booth that I claim it's Wild Horse Cafe. We make our own beans, we don't use canned. Um, and then we use, I think it's like, I think it's 90 10 uh ground beef, mm -hmm. so it's like only 10% fat, I think. That's the kind of stuff we use, and then bread is just literally just water and flour. Mm -hmm. That's how we use. That's how we were taught to do it, and that's how we make it. But from your point of view, what would you say an Indian taco should really cost? Because hmm. I know you said ten before. I honestly, I think I'm still on the the ten, the ten boat. The ten boat. The ten boat with a drink. With though. a drink, just yeah. it comes with a drink, like a yeah. drink of your choice. Yeah. But then here's a quick tricky question, though. Because you know I'm a businessman sometimes. Um, if it's a much bigger drink, like so that because we I've talked with my boss at the at the at the um, food booth mm -hmm. about bringing in different drinks, bringing in like the more like glass Coke bottles. Oh wow, that's like bringing those in. Yeah. How much would you pay for an Indian taco on one of those? <laughs> I really got her stumped. I got her stumped again. Twelve, perhaps. 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 It kind of it kind of goes up a little bit with like how much you're really spending on both the taco and the drink. Mm -hmm. Depends on what quality that drink is. Yeah. Right? Huh? Because I've I've thought about Snapple too, Snapple and like peace tea. Am I gonna lie? I've had a case of Prime at home. <laughs> Has like, like I had a case of hydration, the hydration one, mm -hmm. at case of prime, but I got it at Costco's. It was on sale, and I was like, "Yo, we could sell these at the food booth for two dollars a bottle." Of, so, food booth. It's, it's, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I can't talk to you guys. Honestly, <laughs> if if a booth had energy drinks like Red Bull, C four, Alani, like Ooh. I would, I would drop Ooh. it back. You drop it. <laughs> I would drop a whole one G, like a whole, like just a whole band on it, honestly. Yeah. But um, if anything, I just realized we're both addicted to that. Oh yeah, it's terrible. I, I, okay, how about this? No, no, no. I just realized how has caffeine 
affected you throughout your college? So I'm not going to lie. People may not know it, but caffeine is your best friend. Oh, yeah. When you're in college. It's the only thing getting you through college. Um, For me, I, I rely on caffeine way too much. I do kind of switch it up. Sometimes I'm more on like a coffee side of caffeine. And then sometimes I rely more on like energy drinks. Mm-hmm. So I think just keeping like keeping it versatile and like the forms of caffeine does help because then you're not getting tired of what you're consuming, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Cause I've definitely, there's definitely been times where I'm like up late at night and I literally probably have chugged two energy drinks just to get one to do essays mm-hmm. to get assignments done. And then, editing having to do all this yeah. and like that takes up so much time but you would say like how has caffeine really affected your life coming into college oh man okay so i can't really function too well without it like sometimes i get so obviously cool. caffeine addiction is a really obviously it's kind of a big thing it's a, it was like, it's a serious legitimate thing, thing. It's a legitimate thing. <laughs> yeah. like when i first looked at like because my first energy drink i got into i'm not even gonna lie it was g fuel you may really? not think there's no caffeine in it. There is. And there's a lot in there. Just a powdered form. But then once you get it in like a can form, it's so much more. And then same thing with Prime. Prime has so much. Ca- like I haven't been to Prime in a long time, actually. Oh, shit. Yeah. Right, we're going to have to go to the vending machine after this. <laughs> they have some in there. Unless it's open. But um, how has like how has caffeine really affected um, in your perspective? It allows me to maintain productivity. But if I don't have it, I feel like i am probably the most tired person on the planet sometimes it gets so bad to the point where i have like really bad migraines until i do finally consume some like form of caffeine actually it's just been that way i guess it has been from college though because over the summer i kind of just try to maintain the caffeine thing because like obviously i will have like withdrawals yeah like... so me and my mom were in south dakota for uh, a powwow and there aren't really like any like coffee places and there wasn't really any place that had like a energy drinks that i liked mm-hmm. and so i was going through it i really? i had to sleep in i had terrible oh. headaches the last day of the powwow i was like mom i can't dance today oh no and so we had to we had to leave uh rosebud and go to rapid oh. so i could finally get some coffee oh my god that actually is like yeah yeah but i think we're gonna probably start wrapping it up here but okay. from you know you've seen the interviews you've been on one mm-hmm. how have you liked it how have you liked them they're actually Be honest, they're like, really entertaining and then also being on one how did you like being on it on an interview because you know because if people who do not know, once we hit a, a hundred episodes of Catching Up with Cousins, we are going to be transitioning into this podcast. Okay. There's no more Catching Up with Cousins interviews. There'll still be power interviews, but mm-hmm. they'll still just be not Catching Up with Cousins. But how was your time, you know, being on the interview at Sam and Will? I had a lot of fun since since you're like a very approachable, friendly person. It was really easy to have a conversation with you mm-hmm. to joke around and stuff yeah. like that. Oh man, the choking around part. That's uh <laughs> Oh god, that was uh I almost got myself canceled. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that was really joking around though. Okay. <laughs> kidding, I, I'm kidding. I, you, my humor is just so messed up sometimes. I'm not even lying. You you've seen it. You've seen yeah, no, your no. sister. Don't worry, your I, sister don't worry. I'm used to it. it. I'm a, I'm a younger sibling. I've already endured this type of uh <laughs> But I do thank you for your time being on this podcast. You are the first person on this podcast. I am. I do wish you good luck on your Miss You Silly campaign. And yeah, this episode was sponsored by Prime. I'm just kidding. You're going to get sued. We're going we're gonna to get sued by Prime for talking about it. Logan Paul's going to show up to your house. Logan Paul's going to show up to a powwow. And yeah. Just be like, it's going to be like the... Um, oh, I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> it's, it's just... Uh, the japanese uh, yeah yeah no we're yeah i'm not good done. yeah i'm done. I'm, done. done I'm done my humor is a couple of exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but i do thank you for your time being thank on this podcast thank you for having me thank you so much again lily baga everybody baga ba- baga 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 got a bag of someone okay a bag of chips bag of chips yep Auntie, I need a bag of chips. Exactly. Make sure you get me a Gatorade. 
got two and get me four of them. Get me four of them. But yes, thank you for your time. For this thank podcast. You I appreciate me. you guys. And thank you guys for so much for tuning in for the first episode of Catch Up a Podcast. Again, I am your host, Tao Nota or Native Hustle, and we will see you guys in the next one. See ya.